Hello, in this short video we're going to factor a degree 4 polynomial as shown. Also do it using the method of long division but show a quick way as well by equating the coefficients which I much personally prefer. So here we've got a degree 4 polynomial and the first thing to consider is what are the possible factors. If this did factor, what could it factor to? Let's just have a think about that. It, and here's some possibilities. It could have one linear factor, so x plus something. And then if a linear factor goes into it, obviously the quotient there would be a cubic of some sort. So it could have a linear factor and a cubic that does not factor. Or it could have two linear factors. And then that would be a quadratic, and maybe that quadratic does not factor. Or it could have four linear factors. Or the final possibility is it could actually have, it could factor into two quadratics and the quadratics don't factor. So those are all the possibilities of a degree 4 polynomial. Now let's have a think about what these possible numbers could be here if it did factor. If it did have a linear factor, what could those numbers be? Well, the nice way of doing that is thinking about this last number here, plus 16. Now, because it's a plus 16, if it did factor into four linear factors, so I'm considering this possibility, these numbers must all multiply to make 16. So all we need to consider, really, is possible factors of 16. Uh, thinking of that n number there, if it's a single x at the front. So the possible factors, therefore, would be x plus or minus 1, or x plus or minus 2, or x plus or minus 4, or x plus or minus 8, or x plus or minus 16. Because 1 or minus 1 both go into 16. 2 and minus 2 both go into 16, etc. So here's an example. Now, I'm not saying this is the answer, but here's a possibility. Imagine we had an x plus 1. Then we had an x plus 2. Well, 1 times 2 is 2. Imagine we had another x plus 1. And then, to make the positive 16, I've got 1 times 2 times 1, which is 2. I'd need an x plus 8. So that is a possibility, and you can see why we need to consider the factors of 16, because 1 times 2 times 1 times 8 is 16. Clearly, if I change one of the numbers to a negative, then that would make a negative 16. So then, clearly... If I want to make it work, one of the other ones has to be a negative, because a positive 1 times negative 2 times negative 1 times positive 8 gives me the correct positive 16. So you can see that's how we generate our list of possible factors. Once we have our possible factors, then we can think about the factor theorem. Just one thing to note, if it wasn't an x to the 4, if it was a 2x to the 4, minus 8x cubed plus 24x squared minus 32x plus 16. Uh, and in fact, I'll change that to a 7 there, so it doesn't have a common factor of 2. So if it is a 2x to the 4, and you can't take a common factor out, all of these would be possible linear factors, but also, sorry, all of these, but also you need a 2x in front of one of them, don't you? So in actual fact, it would be x plus or minus 1, x plus or minus 2, x plus or minus 4, x plus or minus 8, x plus or minus 16, all of these, and the 2x plus or minus 1, 2x plus or minus, you don't need the 2 really because that would be a multiple of x plus or minus 1. So really it's only 2x plus or minus 1 which could possibly be, because 2x plus or minus 4, 2x plus or minus 8, 2x plus or minus 16, all have a factor of 2 within that linear factor, and this doesn't have a, a factor of 2. So that's something to consider if your coefficient's not 1 here then obviously it could have um, factors like 2x plus 1 so that's something else to try so here we have now we've thought about our possible factors for this degree 4 polynomial and now we have to try some using the fact theorem the first thing i like to do is to give the polynomial a name so i like to always just out of habit i call it p of x now of course you can use anything you want you can call it q of x f of x is often very common. I choose p of x because p stands for polynomial. So p of x is x to the 4 minus x cubed plus 24x squared 
minus 32x plus 16. And I'm going to put a number in to try it out. So here's my trial. Let's imagine, and I always start with the easiest ones. Let's try to see if x minus 1 is a factor. Now, if you remember from the fact theorem, you let x minus 1 equals 0, and that gives us x equals 1, and you put 1 into the polynomial. So if p of 1 is 0, x minus 1 is a factor. Is p of 1 0? Let's try it. So it'd be 1 minus 8 plus 24 minus 32 plus 16. Well, we can see there that 24 add 16 is 40, add 1 is 41, minus 8 from 41 is 33, and then minus the 32, and it gives me a 1. So p of 1 is not a factor. So let's try minus 1. So that would be, we're trying x plus 1. Let's put minus 1 in. So minus 1 to the power of 4 would be a uh, 1. And then minus 1 cubed would be a minus 1 times minus 8 would be a, that would change to a plus 8. This would stay the same, plus 24. And then 32x would be a plus 32 and plus 16. I'm not even going to bother working it out. It's clearly not equal to 0. So x plus 1 is not a factor. So let's try our next easy one. Let's try x minus 2. So I just like to try all the easy ones first. And I'm afraid to say it is a little bit of just trial and error. That you've got to try them till you find a factor or not. So I'm going to put 2 into the polynomial, because obviously you let x minus 2 equals 0, so x equals 2. And here we go. So I've got 2 to the power of 4. I'm going to show a little bit of working now. Minus 8 times 2 cubed, plus 24 times 2 squared, minus 32 times 2, and then plus the 16. And let's work this out. So 2 to the 4 is 16, uh, minus 2 cubed is 8, uh, times 8 is minus 64, 2 squared is 4, uh, times 24 would be a 96, minus 32 times 2 is a 64, and then plus the 16. So I'm going to just work that out quickly, and we get 0 which is wonderful. So we found a factor. This is great news. So now we know by the factor theorem, which uh, if you're not sure of the factor theorem, you can watch one of my previous videos, x minus 2 is a factor of our polynomial p of x. So now I know that when I divide the polynomial uh, p of x by x minus 2, I will get no remainder, which is wonderful. So now there are two methods to find the quotient. You can do long division, which I'm going to do, or then I'm going to show you a quick way of doing it. So here we go. Let's do the long division first. So I know x minus 2 is a factor of p of x. So I'm just going to write down now um, the long division sum. So here we have uh, our polynomial p of x, and we want to put x minus 2 into it to find the quotient. And check that all of your columns are represented. So we've got a number an x, an x squared, an x cubed, an x to the 4, so we're good to go. And here we go. So I've done this in a previous video, so I'm just going to do this quite quickly. If you're not sure about this, watch our previous video. So x into the x to the 4 goes x cubed times. Multiply x cubed by x minus 2. You get an x to the 4 minus 2x cubed. Put it in a bracket to work out the remainder. x to the 4 minus x to the 4 is 0. That will always happen. Minus 8x cubed minus minus 2x cubed is minus 8x cubed plus 2x cubed, so that's a minus 6x cubed. Bring down the 24x squared. Do x into minus 6x cubed, which is minus 6x squared. Uh, minus 6x squared times x minus 2 is minus 6x cubed, plus 12x squared. Put it in a bracket and subtract to find the remainder. Minus 6x cubed minus minus 6x cubed is 0. That should always happen. 24x squared minus 12x squared is 12x squared. Bring down the minus 32x, as before, and then we do x's into 12x squared, goes 12x times. Do 12x times x minus 2 to get a 12x squared minus 24x. Put it in a bracket, put a subtract in front. Um, 12x squared minus 12x squared is 0, as it should be. Minus 32x minus minus 24x is minus 32x. Add 24x, which is... Minus 8x, of course, bring down the plus 16. Um, x into minus 8x goes minus 8 times. Minus 8 times x minus 2 is minus 8x plus 16. Put it in a bracket, subtract to find the remainder, and if you've got it right, both should cancel and you should get 0 because x minus 2 is a factor. If you don't get 
x at 0 as the remainder, you had either gone wrong in the long division, or x minus 2 wasn't a factor to start off with. So the important thing is we now have the quotient x cubed, this cubic here. So let's write down what we know so far. So this is what we know so far. We're trying to factor this degree for polynomial here, and we knew that x minus 2 was a factor. And actually, when we did the division, we got the quotient of x cubed minus 3x, uh, sorry, minus 6x squared plus 12x minus 8. So this was the quotient. And so we know that the degree 4 polynomial is our linear factor times the quotient, plus the remainder of 0, of course, hence it's a factor. So this is great news. So basically, that's how to factor a degree 4 polynomial with the factor theorem. Of course, what we have to do now is look at this cubic and consider, does this factor? Because maybe we haven't fully factored it. In this case, we have not fully factored it, and we will finish this question now. Now, I want to now show you a quick way, a better way, in my opinion, rather than doing a long division. This method is called equating coefficients. Okay, so here we have our degree for, for polynomial here. And here's our, we know that x minus 2 is a factor. And we know the answer is going to be a cubic. And so basically, I know that the left-hand side has got to be identical to the right-hand side. Hence, hence, I've used the three equal signs there, the congruent symbol. It's an identity. So the left-hand side is identical to the right-hand side if we do it correctly. So I know that this is a degree 4 polynomial. We start by considering the highest degree. So here we've got an x to the power 4. If I've got an x to the power 4 on the left-hand side, I must have 1x to the power 4 on the right-hand side. The only way to generate an x to the power 4 is if I put x cubed there. It's the only way. So x times x cubed is x 1x to the power 4. So I know there has to be an x cubed there. Now, for all of the other terms in the middle, there are two ways to generate them. For the n term, again, there's only one way. So, for example, I know this is a minus 2, and minus 2 times minus 8 makes positive 16. So I know the end term is minus 8, because there's only one way of generating it. So I know the first term is x cubed, I know the last term in that cubic is minus 8. The middle terms, the number of x squareds and number of x's, there are two ways of generating. We'll discuss that in a moment. Now, what I'm going to do is actually erase this minus 8, because that's going to be my check that I've got all of the other numbers right. So now let's consider, let's equate the x cubed terms. On the left hand side, I've got minus 8. So on the right hand side, I also have to have eventually minus 8x cubed, because I've got minus 8x cubed on the left hand side, so I have to have minus 8x cubed on the right hand side. Now as I said, there's only two ways of generating um, x cubed. Because this is a linear one, I do the number times x cubed, so that's generated minus 2x cubed. The only other way of generating an x cubed term is x times the x squared term, because x times x squared makes x cubed. Well, let's think about it. I've got already minus 2x cubed. I want minus 8x cubed, so I need another minus 6x cubed. So that has to be a minus 6, because minus 2x cubed minus 6x cubed gives me my minus 8x cubed. Now we're going to equate the coefficients for x squared, and we're going to do it exactly the same way. I've got 24x squared on the left-hand side, so I have to have on the right-hand side 24x squared as well. There are only two ways of generating x squared, the number times x squared and x times the number of x's. That's the only two ways of generating x squared. So minus 2 times minus 6x squared means at the moment I've got 12x squared. And I don't want 12x squared, I want 24x squared. So I need to generate an additional 12x squared. And so this must be a plus 12x, because x times 12x gives me the 12x squared, and then I add it to my other 12x squared, and I get what I need, the 24x squared. 
So now let's have a look at equating our x terms. Now we know the final number is minus 8, but this is a great check and I love to do it to make sure we've got the right answer. So we know we have minus 32x on the left hand side and at the moment we've got minus 24x, the minus 2 times the 12x there, on the right hand side. So we want to generate an additional minus 8x and the only way of generating an additional minus 8x is x times the number. So it must be minus 8 giving us, we know the correct answer because minus 2 times minus 8 is positive 16 so it all works out beautifully. So I hope you liked that way of uh, factoring that, uh, uh, doing the long division quickly by equating coefficients. Now we have to consider this polynomial here, x cubed. I'm going to call it q of x um, equals x cubed minus 6x squared plus 12x minus 8. And we're going to look for another factor of it. Now there's no point looking at x plus 1 or x minus 1 because they weren't a factor of the original degree 4 polynomial. So they're not going to be a factor of this degree 3 polynomial. So I'm going to start again with looking at x minus 2 because it's the next easiest one. So let's look at q of 2 and see if x minus 2 is a factor. So 2 cubed minus 6 times 2 squared plus 12 times 2 minus 8 whoopee equals zero. So by the factor theorem, we know that x minus 2 is a factor of q of x. So now I'm going to go again and I'm going to equate coefficients. Now you could do long division if you didn't like the equating coefficients method, but I really like the equating coefficients method, which I'm going to go through again for you. So x cubed minus 6x squared plus 12x minus 8. This will save you a lot of time, this equating coefficients. So we know that that has to be a quadratic. Um, in, in here, this has to be a quadratic. So here we go. So I've got x cubed, so this has to be an x squared, sorted. Now I've got minus 2x squared here, and I want minus 6x squared. So I need to generate minus 4x squared. There it is, minus 4x squared. So now we've got the minus 6x squared. Now let's do the next one. I want, of course, 12x's. How many have I got so far? I've got minus 2 times 4x. I've got 8x's. So I need to generate another 4x's. The only way of generating 4x's is 4 times x. Now I've got my 8x plus 4x giving me the 12x. Lo and behold, I know I've got it right because the only way of getting the last term is negative 2 times positive 4, which is negative 8. And we've done the um, long division very quickly in by equating coefficients in our head. And obviously it would be even quicker if I wasn't explaining it as well. Finally, we need to factor this degree 2 polynomial. And oh, that's nice, isn't it? That's x minus 2 all squared. So this actually, this cubic factors to x minus 2 times x minus 2 all squared, so that is x minus 2 all cubed. Don't forget the original factor, remember we had a degree 4 polynomial, so p of x, this is not the answer, p of x would also be, remember we had an x minus 2 times the q of x, and q of x, of course, is x minus 2 all cubed. And so this was, I don't know if any of you recognized it, thinking of the binomial theorem, this polynomial factors quite beautifully to x minus 2 to the power 4. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I'm going to make some more on factoring. This was the first one, and I showed you the equating coefficients. So please do watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much.